St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague, Czech Republic. The Metropolitan Cathedral of Saints Vitus, Wenceslas and Adalbert is a Roman Catholic Metropolitan Cathedral in Prague, the seat of the Archbishop of Prague. Until 1997, the cathedral was dedicated only to St. Vitus, and is still commonly named only as St. Vitus Cathedral. This cathedral is a prominent example of Gothic architecture and is the largest and most important church in the country. Located within Prague Castle and containing the tombs of many Bohemian kings and Holy Roman emperors, the cathedral is under the ownership of the Czech government as part of the Prague Castle complex. Cathedral dimensions are 124 by 60 meters, the main tower is 102.8 meters high, front towers 82 meters, arch height 33.2 meters. The crowning jewel of Prague Castle is without a doubt, St. Vitus Cathedral. You might expect the royal residences would be most distinguished buildings in the compound, but here, the church reigns supreme. Upon entering Prague Castle, you can see the awe-inspiring Gothic towers of St. Vitus poking their heads out above all the other red roof buildings surrounding it. St. Vitus Cathedral is enormous. Exploring it in its entirety might seem daunting to first-time visitors. Spend time studying the details, don't try to take it all in at once. Take a seat inside when you first walk in, allow yourself to take in the design, the layout, the colors, the sounds, and even the small. Follow along with this little guided tour to find out more of the secrets inside these walls. The tour takes you around the exterior and then inside. The tour takes starts at the base of the North Tower following along the north aisles and then around the high altar and gothic chapels, then finishing off walking back down the south side aisles towards the south tower. St. Vitus is one of the best examples of gothic architecture in Prague or anywhere in the world for that matter and should be a must-see site for anyone visiting Prague for the first time. Origins St. Vitus was named by Prague's patron saint, St. Wenceslas, Duke of Bohemia. St. Wenceslas had acquired a holy relic, the arm of St. Vitus, from Emperor Henry I. Since St. Vitus had a Slavic-sounding name and the emperor thought this was the perfect relic to convert the Slavic people to Christianity, St. Vitus is the patron saint of actors, entertainers, and dancers. He is also said to help protect against lightning, dog bites and, if you can believe it, oversleeping. Standing in the third courtyard of Prague Castle, looking up at the looming Gothic towers, you must remember you are in the same spot where a Romanesque pagan temple stood as early as 924. The temple was dedicated to the god of fertility, and many women made the pilgrimage here to pray for a healthy baby. Eventually, the pagan temple was demolished as Christians came to build their cathedral to their new god. Exterior Take some time to examine the church's exterior. Spot all the different creatures which hang over the roof. You'll see dragons, scorpions, musicians, and more. At night these sculptures are all lit up from below, creating a haunting spectacle as their faces seem to move in the light. Although the southern entrance to the cathedral is no longer in use, Walk around the building and look up at what might be the most astonishing part of the exterior to the Golden Gate. This entrance is decorated with colorful and gilded mosaics which combine to produce a stunning scene of the Last Judgment. Unlike the modern western doors, these doors date back from 1370. Since they are so old and delicate, they're no longer in use to protect them from too much wear and tear. To enter the church, go back around to the cathedral's western doors. As you walk through, take a moment to look at the large, bronze reliefs. Each one is adorned with scenes from the history of the cathedral's constructions and legends about St. Wenceslas and St. Adalbert. Adalbert of Prague was a missionary who brought the Christian religion, along with St. Wenceslas, to the people of Bohemia. Although the doorways might look old, these designs only date back to 1953. History 
Like many of the world's great churches, construction took ages. It began in 1344 but was not completed until 1929. Even today, the cathedral is steadily being restored to ensure all the work that went into building such a gem isn't lost to time and the pollution of the faithful. Nave As you walk along the nave, you are immediately struck with a wave of color and light we well as powerful vertical lines. Above the main entrance is the classical rose window, installed in 1927, which depicts various famous scenes from the Bible. North Side Isle on either side of the nave are narrow side aisles lined with small yet elaborately decorated chapels. Many of the chapels are adorned with a large stained glass window. They are dedicated to a particular saint and will often contain a relic or gilded altar portraying scenes of the life of the saint. The first thing you'll notice upon looking at this piece is the saturation of the colors and sharp lines around the figures. Because this pane of glass was painted to not stain Tamucha was able to produce a more impactful artwork filled with powerful organic forms blossoming onto the panels. The Transept As you continue walking down the nave, you'll come upon the crossing. This where the north and south transepts intersect with the nave, creating the cross design which is so important to cathedrals. The south transept contains the glittering stained glass window designed by Max Vabensk. Below the organ are three carved wooden doors with reliefs of the martyrdom and lives of various Bohemian saints. Standing at the crossing, study the ornamental golden pulpit. Many people have remarked that it is one of the most impressive pulpits seen anywhere in Europe. The entirety of the pulpit is covered in gold leaf and renaissance portraits of famous bohemian saints and royalty. The arcade along the aisles contain painted crests of all the bohemian families who have served the realm over the years since the cathedral's construction. The chancel Behind the crossing and in front of the high altar, is the chancel which contains the royal mausoleum. The tombs behind the intricate wrought iron gates are that of Ferdinand I and his wife. Each one of their tombs is topped with a hauntingly realistic marble effigy. A set of stairs behind the gates leads down to the royal crypt where dozens of bohemian royals are interred. Behind the royal mausoleum is the choir and high altar. The high altar follows the strict neo-Gothic philosophy, tall proportions and fine details. The entire altar resembles the shape of a cathedral itself. The altar of St. Vitus was the crowning place of all the kings and queens of Bohemia, and one can only imagine how beautiful the royals would have looked in their finery, made only finer by the sparkling interior of the cathedral. Gothic Chapels Surrounding the chancel is a ring of Gothic chapels. Starting on the left, the north end, make your way around finishing off at the famous, St. Wenceslas Chapel. The first chapel you'll visit is of St. Sigismund, one of the patron saints of the city of Prague. Designed by Frantiak Kanka in 1720, it contains a remarkable red marble altar with stone carved into depictions of the saint. St. Sigismund was once king of the Burgundians before he was captured by the king of Orleans and executed. St. Anne's Chapel is next. Standing in the center is a sumptuous Gothic altar. Inside are three white marble saints, the central figure being St. Anne herself. St. Anne was the mother of Mary and grandmother of Jesus according to apocryphal Christian and Islamic tradition. Behind the altar is an elaborately designed stained glass window portraying a multitude of saints. On either side of the chapel are two large, painted frescoes depicting scenes from the saint's life. Next is the Lady Chapel or the Trinity Chapel. Inside the Lady Chapel is a magnificent altarpiece depicting the Visitation. In Christianity, the Visitation was the meeting of Mary with Elizabeth. Prague was one of the first places in the world to celebrate the Feast of the Visitation, at the behest of Archbishop Jan Jenstein in the 1390s. This meant that even the tombs fit in perfectly with the design of the rest of the cathedral. On the other side of the Lady Chapel is the great tomb of St. Vitus himself. 
a sculpture of the saint is carved atop the tomb, set against a background of golden lattice work. The tomb itself is rather subdued and simple. But the most impressive tombs is the Baroque, silver-encased resting place of St. John of Nepomuk which stands across from the Gothic chapels. The tomb is draped in a deep red canopy held up by a squadron of divine angels. Two tons of silver was used to create this work of art. St. John of Nepomuk made a martyr by being drowned in the Voltava River when he refused to divulge the secrets of the Queen's confessional. He is now the patron against calumnies a protector from floods and drowning. Reliquary Chapel, St. Vitus Cathedral The chapel of St. John of Nepomuk across from him tomb contains a cherished relic. Years after St. John of Nepomuk was drowned, his body was pulled from the river and a part of his body, saved in this reliquary. Beside the chapel of Nepomuk is the Waldstein Chapel which contains two beautiful fresco on either wall and a small altarpiece in the center, behind a wonderfully geometric stained glass window. The royal oratory is set along the row of chapels. It contains one of the most elaborate designs of the cathedral with ribbed vaulting carved into the balcony to make it look like tree branches, growing from the stone. This is Parler's work and is almost an early influence to Gaudi's Sagrada Familia. St. Wenceslas Chapel But the most important chapel of them all is St. Wenceslas Chapel. St. Wenceslas was the Duke of Bohemia from 921 until his assassination in 935. His younger, power-hungry, brother was found guilty of his murder. Although he was never an actual king, many people know his from the Christmas Carol Good King Wenceslas. The heroic goodness of the Duke was well known throughout Bohemia, and years after his death people continued to spread stories of his kindness. He was eventually posthumously declared a king and given a sainthood. From floor to ceiling, this chapel is embellished with the most exquisite paintings, gilding and ornaments. The lower portions of the walls in here are decorated with over 1,300 semi-precious stones and paintings depicting the Passion of Jesus from 1372-1373. In the center of the room hangs a golden chandelier which resembles a grand crown, for the King of Kindness. Inside the chapel, relics of the saint are still housed inside his tomb, seen below covered in a red and gold embroidered drape. In the corner of the room, there is a small door with seven locks. This door leads to the crown chamber which contains the city's crown jewels. These treasures are off-limits to the public, except for one day, every eight years, when the seven locks are opened, and these incredible riches can be looked upon by the people of the city. High Tower For those of you who have the courage and energy, be sure to climb the high tower to get some of the most impressive views of the city and courtyards below. The bell atop the tower is named Sigismund Bell and was forged in 1549. It is Bohemia's largest bell and to hear it ring out is a great thing to hear. The stained glass window the back of the chapel depicts various parts of the psalm in sparkling, vivid colors and with the characters moving throughout in ways not traditionally seen in static stained glass. In the chapel of the Holy Sepulchre, the large, pink and purple stained glass window draws out all the different acts of mercy. There is also an early Baroque altar from 1674 and a picture of St. Mary Magdalene from 1600. This St. Ludmila Chapel is located along the Southern Isle and is a significant place for Czech Christians. St. Ludmila was the grandmother of St. Wenceslas and taught him Christian kindness. She married Borova, the first Czech prince to adopt Christianity. Ludmila raised St. Wenceslas as her son after the death of his father. The anti-Christians who ran the country after the death of Wenceslas' father opposed Ludmila and resented her influence over Wenceslas. Before Wenceslas could ascend the throne, they strangled Ludmila, hoping to end Wenceslas' pursuits of Christianity. Unfortunately, it had the opposite effect, and after her death, 
when Cecilus was even more passionate about securing his grandmother's legacy. Even if you are not religious, St. Vitus Cathedral is a monumental work of art and must be visited, especially if it's your first time in Prague. The entry is always free so if you feel like you want to visit on more than one occasion to study it up, you can come and go as you please. Step back in time. Step into history. Step into St. Vitus Cathedral. Like us and join us at Extreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.